bro, you at the age of 25 for 35 years, if you put away at an average of 9% interest rate, you're gonna have damn near a million dollars. Damn near a million dollars. So it's, it's, it's that, you know how they always say, time is money, time is money. Yeah, time is money. Ooh, and we're back. <laughs> man, it's a, uh, Man, it's always good to be in this, this on this platform, man. Especially with you guys, man. We, you know, all coming from where we came from. Just again, a lot of y'all know that we, our backgrounds and uh, with professional sports and and uh, just the direction that we've gone, um, just went within our careers and stuff now. And uh, I guess one of one of the things that we we always talk about and it was very important to us, you know, especially as a man, you know, when you when you think about a man it's we always want to protect and provide right and, and and that's one thing that we're, we're that's instilled in us you know and when you think about protection you know you by all means you want to you know protect your family take care of your family and then you know we talk about providing you know the financials you know what i'm saying the doulars the spondolis <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, as a man, I remember we was talking about this. You, you had mentioned something, Rob. Um, uh, I think it was just, if a man is not making a certain amount of money or something like that, you know, it's, you only going to get a certain caliber of woman, right. you know, a certain caliber of lifestyle. A man, if, he, if he's not bringing in a certain X amount of dollars, he kind of feel less than, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we have to, you know, um, we have to be the breadwinner, you know. Um, and well, I, I mean, I say, I'll say that we don't have to be the breadwinner, but I feel like, like you just said, um, what we said in the last podcast is that you're only going to get a certain woman. Uh, it, you know, certain women are not going to put up with a man making less money than them. It's sad it is like that, but it is what it is. I ain't saying she a gold digger. <laughs> she ain't messing with no broke, broke, broke. My auntie, uh, LaShawn, she said the same thing. She said, uh, money doesn't really motivate me with the man. She said, I'm more interested in how hard he works and how, how much he's trying. Mm -hmm. And I said, damn, auntie, they don't make him like you no more. You know, nah. for real. You know what's crazy, though? There, there's women that's out there who loves that drive in me. That's a turn on. It's a, it's a sense of... You know, you want to see that 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 powerful motive in your man. You want to see that. You know what I'm saying? And that's that. And when you have that 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 encouragement, and you know, they see show you that appreciation, like you know, you're doing this, keep pushing. That make a man want to push even more. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you have that support system, right? Instead of you know, you get nagged out. You know, and it's man. like, man, no matter what I do, I feel like I ain't doing enough. Right. Or you or know? I feel like. I, I mean, at times I feel like we have dreams and we have goals and sometimes we may be trying to start a venture and, you know, sometimes that, that venture can be shot down by the woman that you're with and uh, that is not a good feeling, man. I mean, I'm somebody that's very, very like, I think out of the box. I try to create things, that, you know, to hustle, to make another way, right. another source of income. Right. And when my dreams get shot down, I kind of, I don't know, I go into my sunken place. <laughs> That's what, really? that's what we don't want. Right. You know, you don't you want to you don't want to be in that place. And when you and, and when you when we're when, as men or just even people in general, when you feel like you're in that sunken place, you're defeated. Right. And then it's hard to come out of that. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to come out of that because now you're in a position to where that's what you're kind of surrounding yourself with because you're looking for that sympathy. Right. You know, everything that comes out of your mouth is coming from that sunken place. So now that's the type of people that you're gonna attract. They always say, you know, you know, look at the people you hang around with, because that that group of five, you're gonna be the sixth one. No matter if they're wealthy, you could possibly be that sixth one. If they broke, you're gonna be that sixth one, right? You typically kind of mold yourself to the people that you're constantly hanging yourself hanging around with, and that just hap that is just, that's just this natural because you start creating these habits. Right. You know, you start, you guys, you, we we start acting. So we are, and when we us, we are so similar because we always around each other in so many ways. And then and that happens, and then it, the the mentality feeds off each other. 
You know what I'm saying? Like every we all inspire each other in some way, shape, or form, right? And we motivate each other in some way, shape, or form. And that that's that's huge, you know what I mean? And it that's what you got. That's why we on here. That's why we're doing this, man. We're trying to reach <laughs> out to everybody, you know. I, so I wanna say, um I'm I never been a material guy and buying women material things, even though women like bags and nice shoes. You know, I think that, um, you know, certain people feel at times like, oh, if she dressed in a certain way, she'd go digger. And that doesn't always mean that. You know what I mean? They got to have those materials to make them feel like they somebody. Mm. And you got to understand, just because of which your appearance looks, you may look like you got a lot of money. But what does that bank account say? It's right. a lot of people that's stunting out there like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Stunting out there. Now, there's certain certain bags and things like that, they don't lose value. Like certain Louis Vuittons and stuff like that. Like those, that you don't lose value. And real leather and stuff like that, they don't lose that value. You can always resell it, you can always hand it down, whatever, you, 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 it still maintains that value. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, I'm not big and all that like that, but f from what I know or heard, you know what I'm saying, it's like, they got it. I never own any Louis Vuitton, nothing, ever. What's the most expensive thing that you say you bought in your career when you played? My truck. Your truck. Your truck was clean. Boy. That's your <laughs> thing. That was the most expensive thing. And I, I remember I used to buy them, uh, the Christian Adage shirts. Mm -hmm. You know, the, um, that was like 250 a t-shirt. All right, that true religion. Hold on, you had some true religion jeans as well. Cause nah, you I got did. me on the true religion. Yeah. And I was like, I was, man, this is a little bit out of my budget. You feel <laughs> me? <laughs> I was on the true religions. I was on the true religions and the Christian out of Jay. That right. was that era at that time, right? And I, that was good. This, that leads to my next thing, you know, and all of us was in different places in our career. Financially, what would you have done differently? Um, just being in a position to kind of like give you that cushion or just kind of jumpstart like towards uh, just investing and things like that. Like for your future. For your future, I'll moving forward for your future. What would you feel like you would, how would you handle your financials, finances then versus now? Well, you know, I, um, I wasn't making y'all type of money, <laughs> but uh, what I would do different is I would, um, I think I started doing it, you know, after my second year, my first year, I had to catch up on all my bills. Yeah. When I finally got my bag and got my deal, my contract, I had to catch up on all my bills. I had to make sure that my debt I had was paid off. So my second year, I, I set up three different accounts. And basically, I was taking the wisdom from a man that told me the same thing, Terrell. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this money ain't going to be here forever. And you, and you can't save the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so basically, what I did was... I started putting that money away and living like I was poor, like I wasn't making anything. And, um, you know, I'll never forget, me and Brack and I, we were in Miami. And uh, i can just give you an example. We had a great time in Miami. We were hanging with guys that were drafted in the first round. Mm -hmm. This dude is blowing money. 30 bands. And I said... So he looked at me. I said, hey, man, we ain't got to give him nothing for, for this table and, you know, these bottles. Brex said, no, nah. <laughs> let him blow that money, man. <laughs> so I took that that day I grew up and I realized what you just said, what that man told you was that I, we could never live the way that this first round draft pick is living. So, you know, we have to walk a different way. But dude was cool. It wasn't like we were living or like. You know, mooching off him, but nah, we was all in, he was all we was all we chilling was all together, together, and he yeah. just took care of the whole group. And I, I thought that was pretty awesome of him to do that. But at the same time, you know, when Brack and I, well, me really, when I when we got back home, I said, "Dang, man, we spent." I know I spent like three grand out there, and I know Brack had to spend more than that. So it was like that was stupid, but it was we had a great we had time. A great time, young. Young, dumb, and yeah, fun, fun, you feel yeah, me? Full of fun. Right, but I feel like um, I learned from that trip, like, dang, man, you know, this money's not forever, and, you know, now you just dug a hole, how you gonna get out of it? But I had, I've always been a hustler. I've always figured out ways to make extra income besides my contract money. You know, I could cut hair, and that was a hustle for me. I, man, I could bring in a thousand a week if I wanted to, if I wanted to sit up there and cut like that. So um, I tried to fill that void of that, 
that hole I made myself whenever I did splurge and, and live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, what I would do different is I would surround myself with people that have, that are, you know, millionaires, like I have done now. Yeah. I know people today that are coaching me up and I, you know, I, um, they don't even know that they're my mentors, but they're my mentors, man. I'm, li I'm listening. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to buy a property right now. You know, I keep seeing lots and, and, and um, you know, figure, I'm trying to figure out ways to get that lot, you know, in, in another state. And the one thing I wish I would have did was I wish I would have put money aside to buy property in college towns. Um, mm. Because we know when you were at Wazoo, when you were at Notre Dame, mm. kids come in. Kids yeah, go home or, or graduate and then they come and more kids come in. Mm -hmm. So I just feel that if I could do it all over again, I would have bought some property back in my, my, my college town that I went to school in mm -hmm. and rent it out. Rented it out. That's like uh, my boy Carl Payman, his, his parents did. And shit, he was living rent free. He, all of us roommates was paying the rent. He collected his checks every month. You right. know what I'm saying? He was putting money in his pockets, man. Just kind of touch on just with uh you know, i know i was in a different caliber uh, with you guys and and when it came to finances in a professional era i would have done things completely different <laughs> i was having a good time <laughs> good time you know what i'm saying and there was i did put a lot of money away because i had like when with our coming out our checks for our ret retirement pension and everything i was putting more than than average there's just the the minimum that was coming taken out but I had my Vegas nights, had my <laughs> Miami nights, you know, Houston, wherever, you know, New York being out, right? And you just, you're having a good time. You're with all your boys and you just, you know what, I got it. Don't trip, I got it, you know. You know, I mean, we would make sure, I was making sure all my, my close friends was taken care of, you know what I'm saying? And like, man, before you know it, it's like, I get 6,000 here, right? 10,000 here, and I'm right. like, God, dog. And then that's, that's just in the club. That's not clowning food and me gambling and things like that, right? You know what I'm saying? And just, it just, it added up, you know? And the thing is, during the season, I didn't spend much money at all during the season. I just took care of my bills. You really ain't doing much during the season, you know? But when the off season come around and you're not generating any more income, now you're just spending, you're spending, you're spending. And my rookie year, I was around first round draft pick, like dudes like Dwayne Bo, you know, uh, Turk, Turk didn't really, he, he was good. He very was pretty frugal. good with money. Yeah, very frugal with yeah. Very good, but he, you know, we all had these experiences, right? You know, um, and you seeing certain guys just spending money and certain guys telling you, you want to come out, like going out with Ty Law and them, and you know, they can live a certain lifestyle. You can't do it. And then your, your rookie years, you're spending, that's where you spend your most money. Your wardrobe changes, you get your apartment, you buy your furniture, you know, you get your car, whatever, you know what I mean? Like that's like all, that's where most of your expenses come out, right? But it doesn't and have to be like that. It does not, you know, it doesn't. But see, you're, you're fresh out of college. And you, you, ain't you never had it, nothing. You ain't never had nothing. <laughs> right. And, and you make it $400,000. After, ta right. after taxes, you bring it home like 12 grand a week. You know what I'm saying? And they have different programs for you to where they'll pay you every other week to where they can hold another check, hold a check for you. That way you have your money in offseason. So there was different things that you could have done, right? Mm -hmm. But you didn't want to take advantage of it. I didn't take advantage of it, you know? And then, you know, coming home in off season, being in California, I was in Hollywood every other night. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you, you're spending, you're spending. And like, you just, there's any times where it's like, man, I'm not gonna even pack your bag. I'm just about to go and just go buy something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're, you're just living it up. Like, we was just, well, you want to go to Miami tomorrow? Come on, let's go. Let's go. And we out of right. here. Like, so you have access to do those things. And, but when you look back at it, it's like, did I really have to do that? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's so much. That's, that's just say, for example, that's a hundred grand already that I could have invested mm -hmm. into like a, my own Roth IRA right. type deal, right? So I could have invested that, that that hundred grand, and if I didn't touch that hundred grand, and that was still sitting, what was that about? How many years ago? Five, six. six. No, no, we're longer than that. Two thousand seven. <laughs> Two thousand seven. We're in what? Twenty two. A twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. So just think about that. If I just took a hundred grand of that and just sat it in a in a Roth or something like that, right? 
and and possibly didn't even touch. I would, of course, during you know these times, two thousand eight or whatever, to whatever, I'd have probably lost some, but still, I mean, and uh, I would have had a lot of capital gains on that as well, right? right. So just thinking that that interest, I would have had building on that, and then even if I was just to put away four hundred dollars a month, I could have put a whole hundred grand in there and four hundred dollars a month. Think about that at an average of a nine percent interest rate or something like that, right? So just thinking what future. I know now, if I would have known that then, right? Because I remember one time I had, and I was in Kansas City, I had 200 grand sitting in a savings account at Bank of America. 200 grand sitting at the Bank of America, right? That was earning less than 1%, mm-hmm. like 0.2%. I think with that, I maybe, maybe got $200, uh, $200 gained on that mm-hmm. and put it in the CD at a bank. Losing it, losing it. Like, I, so if I'd have known how money works then, like I know now, it would have been a, a whole different spin for me financially, right? And a lot of, a lot of us players and athletes coming out, you, we're young, man. We want to yeah. have fun. You were a college student. You were struggling. You know what I'm saying? You, you, but the thing is, when you think about how broke we was as college students, we found a way to make it work and we lived it up. Right. Still had a blast. Still had the access to what we got, what we wanted, or whatever for the most part, you know, and made it work. But then you get into a whole, you get into that that five percent error, pretty much. You get into that one percent when you and when you far as that entertainment lifestyle, and now you start hanging around. When we talk about who you hang out with, you start now. You starting to see you in the club with these dudes, these entertainers, these athletes, and you just seeing that lifestyle. Now you feel like you got to keep up. Now, right. I, I, mean, I, I was in. I, not to cut you off, but yeah. I remember when Lil Wayne and Chris Brown was in Miami, just sending bottles back to back, one another, and yeah. we sitting in the middle of this, like this is gonna keep going on all, all night. night. But they got it. They got it. <laughs> I tried to hang. I tried to do that with uh, Kevin Hart for a little bit, but I, I just got about two bottles. He <laughs> kept going. He got one. I got one. He got one. I got one. He got one. We just stayed with that. <laughs> <laughs> Live on Sunday. But, but to go back to what you're saying, not to get off subject, you know, that Roth IRA is stuff that was really foreign to us. No one was telling Nobody us that. Nobody was teaching us. I, you know, we, we have the ability and uh, the privilege of training these athletes today. And when they leave out of our hands to go to college, I'm telling them, yeah. bro, you're going to get a check. <laughs> that check may be anywhere from eight to $1,200. Don't blow that whole check. Put some of that money away. Get a Roth IRA. Yeah. I'm saying it to these athletes today. And I wish somebody would have been there to tell us that. Uh, yeah. But there wasn't. Yeah. So you got to understand it. And it's like you can't you can't sit there and try to keep up with the Joneses. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's levels to this. Like when they say it's levels to this, it's levels to this. And like if I was, like I was saying, so things could have been a whole lot different for me life after football if I would have invested properly, you know, and took advantage of all that, those different, different, uh, the knowledge that's out there. Because when we, when we look at things, and then you mentioned it earlier, when we talk about generational wealth. Right, and we just look look at like the just the just the cycle of kind of like how money is. So like, check this. I'm gonna write some shit stuff down. So when we talk about this, so you have you have your one percent up here, right? So you, with your one percent, you have that's all your business owners right there, right? They they these are the business owners. You know they that they're that one percent of the world. They're the billionaires, right? Then you have down here is you have this thirteen percent bottom line, right? That's the middle that's class or the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Right. There you go. So you have your thirteen percent. So this is your your welfare, people living off the, uh, the, the, the 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 you know the system, right? You know what I'm saying. So like you got you got these people living off the system, right? And then you have your middle class. This is where majority of everybody is what about the eighty six percent. Right. Your middle class. And think about this, though. As you living in this middle class of people. We're funding this and we're funding this. And this is how I know we're, we're funding, 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 funding this. And then what I mean by like people in that system, the welfare or whatever, our taxes is taking care of that. Right. So that's where our tax dollar, our tax money is going. Right. You think they really paying taxes and stuff? No. They finding ways to beat taxes, having their write-offs and everything, right? And all that. Everything, right? 
And so again, us as middle class, how are we funding them? With all the goods and services, the shopping, the, the buying the, you know, they're all whatever stores. These are the Walmarts. These are the 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 the, the owners of the Targets. These are the That's owners of the Louis Vuitton stores. Louis Vuitton. You know what I'm and all that stuff, right? <laughs> these are that one percenters. We we're 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 funding their businesses. Right. We're funding their business because we have the means. We want we want the nice things. We're working hard for the nice stuff, right? So we're buying it from the one percent, and our tax dollars is paying for this. So essentially, this is is the cash cow. Yeah. No, I can go cow. I'll put cow, cow. <laughs> Make that look better. But anyway, as a middle class, you're the cash cow. All right? And, and that's what it is. So when we, a lot of us don't realize that. So how can we be within this 86%, right? And live and have the perks of the 1%. Tell them, Brack. How can we do that, right? Now it's... We got to live within this mean, though. We still got to live within this mean. We can't be in this 86% and get a couple, get some money and then feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm going to buy all this X amount of stuff. It's not necessities. We don't have to, right? But think about this. The way you live your life here can generate a lifestyle up here. It can, based on how are you spending your money. And people don't realize that. How can I invest and make my money work for me? Because here we working hard for our money. Here you these are these are 12 to 16 hour days of people. You know what I'm saying? 12 to 16 hour days. 14 or however, however they work. Because they these these people, these people are a lot of times don't even get to see their family and they come home and just want to go to sleep because they got to sit there and provide, right? <laughs> like when we talk about we want to protect and provide, but there's ways to live that lifestyle being in the middle class of that 1%, you know what I'm saying? And then another thing I always like to talk about is the first thing we do, we wanna save money, right? We want, we talk, you mentioned it earlier, we talk about generational wealth, right? And I mentioned to, this to you before. But when we're talking about generational wealth, the first way to be able to purchase wealth, to gain wealth, life insurance. Right. Life insurance is the way to gain wealth. And a lot of people understand when you look at life insurance, they feel like, oh, when you hear life insurance, they just think, oh, life insurance is just to pay for a funeral expense, leave money behind, whatever. I like to use it as income protection because you want to protect your income, period. You, with life insurance, it's an income protection. And when you, generally, when you get life insurance, you're supposed to get at least uh, the amount, your face amount is supposed to be at least five to 10 times your coverage, all right, which you, your income, right? That's just your income. So we're not talking about your liabilities such as your home, cars, and all these other debts and expenses that we have, right? Because God forbid anything was to happen. So so, so say you got, we got a towel right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. So we look at this right here, right? You got, you got John, you got Mary in her dress, excuse me, drawing, <laughs> right? And then you got the little tykes, right? You got the kids, right? Now, say some. John, John bring in eight grand. Mary bring in eight grand, right? A month or whatever. That's some good money. But look, right? And their expenses, it is what it is. Just say, for example, he gone. So they lived a lifestyle where they were bringing in 14, uh, 16,000 16, 16, a month. Right, sixteen thousand a month. Once he's gone, those bills and that lifestyle still continues. Right, right. Those bills and those lifestyles still continue. She's. They want to still here. They got used to a way of life. They got to be able to maintain that certain way of life. You have no life insurance now. With those bills, everything slows up. There's a possibility now they could leave, lose that crib. Right, because now she's trying to fund everything on her home. Because think about, they're bringing in 16 grand. What type of house are they going to have? What type of cars are they going to drive, right? They're going to live a pretty good lifestyle. That's good money, right, together. But once that's gone, that lifestyle ends up, ends up decreasing when you don't have that income protection. So how do you protect that income, right? It's by purchasing life insurance. That's how you purchase wealth, right? Because now, God forbid anything will happen to John or whatever. Now, that income protection takes care of that home, takes care of that lifestyle, 
and continue to maintain these kids. If they got to pay for college, they got money to go to college. Right. It's, it's, and people don't understand that. So that that that's how you create generational wealth. Here's the thing. When we get that, this is this we're, we're backwards in American way, because a lot of couples, they get together, they save for homes and stuff like that to put the down on the home. Now, so you saving to put this to make this payment on this house. I don't know if they can see this, but you saving to buy this house right here. Right. Mm, don't, don't be dissing my house. <laughs> but we saving to buy this house, right? Just say you saved up ten grand, ten thousand. Put that down on that house, right? Let's say it's a four hundred thousand dollar house. Okay. Y'all put that together. God forbid. Now y'all making payments on this home. God forbid something happens to John. You still got what? To pay on this house, three fifty. I don't know, three, seven, uh, eight, ninety. Mm-hmm. Three ninety on this house, so it's three hundred and ninety thousand. That your significant other got to come up with to take care of this home. God forbid something was happen to you. So now you're already at three hundred and ninety thousand in what? Debt. Debt. So instead of having that life insurance policy to protect your income, right, to take care of this expense, with life insurance, you could create a generational wealth. Without it, just making, getting this down on this home, taking on, you know, on the family, right? You just created a generational debt. You created a gener- generational debt, right? As soon so as pre- mom dies, it's going to go to the types. Exactly. And it's just going to pass down. So all these liabilities, and then that's not, that's not counting the car. You know what I'm saying? That's not counting the, if the kids are in private school. The boat. Or whatever. <laughs> you know, the, the everything, right? right? The groceries, the, 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 the living expenses, bro. So this is, this is what, that's how you create. You got to purchase wealth. That is your income protection. Life insurance is so important and people don't realize that, especially in a lot of black communities. I don't want to get life insurance. I don't need it. Da, 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 da. Man, you something is better than nothing because you never know what you got to leave back for your child. I, I I got a story, man. You know, I stayed with a family um, when I came back from college, and her husband died. Okay, she had five kids. All the girls were at the house. Six kids. All the girls were at the house. Son was at the house as well. And her, she lived with her sister. But she used to tell us, my husband left me multiple accounts and I didn't understand what she meant but it's funny that you're telling me this because I get it now he had life insurance policies set up for her like multiple she good she's still good to this day mm-hmm. and uh and the reason why I know that because I'm cool very good friends with her son and it's just like he set her up so when he died she was able to keep the flow of things going the way it was right so but I feel like in our culture we don't know anything about this. And you're right. We actually inherit debt. Inherit debt. Big time. So Be- I hope you guys listen to this. It's some real stuff right here. Because check it out. <laughs> check it out. Like, what's, what's one thing that generally passes down from generation to generation? Is that home, that property. Everybody wanted that home ownership, right. right? So they can keep it going down from generation to generation. But if that home is not paid for, you know... That debt lingers. It's that debt that debt lingers, right? And this is another thing. Like when when like when we when we talk about life insurance, and another reason why people are afraid of life insurance, because they feel like they have to pay out a lot of money. Life insurance is not expensive. It's not. You healthy, you know, you're young, it's not expensive. If you the, the cheapest type of life insurance is term. Term. I think I spelled that right. It's your term insurance, right? The cheapest. Okay? And reason why I say that, say if you got like a 35-year level term, you pay on life insurance, you have your 35 years, right? You can get, just say, a half a million in coverage based on your health, maybe, I could say anywhere from 70, uh, 70 to 100 bucks. A month. A month with a half a million. If you're living in a four hundred thousand dollar house, God forbid something was to happen to you, right? 
that's going to take care of that home, and then you, your family still got some. You know this what I'm saying? Just a little what, bit. We just had that's, this conversation, yeah. and he was like, well, you want a $2 million policy, a $3 million policy? And I was like, I need that $5 million policy, man. Yeah. Like, let, let's, let's go there. I get it now. You know what I mean? You, you got to understand. So it, it's basically, and the thing is, they think, oh, you only pay on life insurance for 35 years. Yes. Because look, what you do is you buy term and then you invest the difference. And what, they, what do they mean by invest the difference? Well, think about it. You have different type of uh, life insurance policies out there. You got your whole life policies, your variable life policies, you know, things like that, what right? What do you feel the best for well, family is? And, and, and it, depending on everybody's situation is different. Everybody's situation is different. But then you have these cash value policies to where they tell you, you know what? You can generate cash and you can borrow, your, you can borrow against your life insurance. But check this out. With, 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 with cash value policies, and what you're saving, for one, you don't know how much is going into your cash value. You don't know how much is going into your, uh, your life insurance. And your premiums are very expensive. So you could be paying that uh, like 100 just I could say $150. $150 for only hundred grand in life insurance. And you're paying that for the whole life. But they're telling you, oh, you're going to accumulate cash value. Okay, say for example, you had... Just say 10 grand in your cash value at this point in time, right? And you wanted to pull that 10 grand out. Guess what's going to happen when you, when you try to pull this 10 grand out of your cash value? Oh, yeah. And then you have to pay it back on top of a 6 to 8% interest rate. Mm. Yeah, you're going to have to pay that back. So you're like, yo, what's going on? Like, this is my money that I'm investing. This is my money. Say, for example, like you going into a bank every, every month, you putting in $150 in your bank, $150 in your bank every day. I mean, every month, every month. And you decided I wanted to take out some money that was like, you know what? I got, you got insufficient funds. You don't have no money in there. Well, your cash value, depending on what program you have, it doesn't generate any cash value until like anywhere from one to five years. Right. And then when you do have some cash value in there, just say you went to your bank, you withdraw some money. And instead of your, your, your receipt, it's telling you how much more you have left. They handed you a loan receipt and say you have to pay this back. And you're like, hold on, this is my money. So you're borrowing your own money. And God forbid anything was to happen to you. This money that you pulled out your cash value, and God forbid something was to happen to you. It comes out of your face amount. They're going to take it out of that. So your beneficiary is not going to get all of that. So you have to be careful with what type of policies you have out there. See, the thing is, what I, that's why I like buy term investor difference. Because you're buying your term, your, your money is paying for your life insurance. It's like car insurance. You know, any, in the event if anything happens to you, that's the indemnity. That's what it restores. You're going to get that money back. Right? Your car, if something, if something happened to your car, you're going to get it fixed. It's going to get restored. Right? Or your income gets restored. Buy term investor difference. So now, whatever money, so I'm, look at that. You're paying anywhere from 70 to, the, um, to 100 bucks for a half a million. Right. And they paying one hundred and fifty four hundred thousand. Right. So just say, for example, that money that we saved them right there, this extra 50 bucks, just say 50 bucks on the high end right there. So now you got 50 bucks. That now you can invest. Right. On top of. OK, now you have some other expenses because now we're going to show you, you can sh put, get a do debt stacking. You know what I'm saying? Now you're stacking debt. Right. And then there's extra money that's going to free up. So now. All right. Now you could put away a hundred, or maybe even just say two hundred, because you just freed up uh, some debt or whatever, right? And now, so look, you putting away two hundred dollars a month, and just in your investments, right? You only you only spending seven seventy to hundred dollars for your life insurance. Just say after end of thirty five years, just say if you had, just say you accumulated, just say four hundred thousand. That's on the low end, right? Four hundred thousand. My commas and everything all off. But anyway, <laughs> you 400000 right? And you have this 500000 God forbid anything was to happen to you, your family is going to collect that 500000 that face amount, and what's ever in your investments. That's what's up. So now they, they, they almost had a million dollars right there taken care of. And check this out. With term insurance... Term insurance teaches you how to eliminate the need for life insurance so you don't have to pay on that all your life. You see, a lot of companies out there want you to be financially dependent. How can you be financially independent? Mm. That's the thing. Financial freedom. Eliminate your need. How to put a, get on, a, get on a, plan, a plan to how to eliminate debt. 
right? Come with a, a financial needs analysis. How am I going to get out of my debt? You know, I call it a financial GPS. Once you put in your numbers, it's going to tell you exactly how to get there and the time you're going to get there, right? So you want to plug in these numbers to let you know, now I could become financially, uh, uh, financially debt-free, debt-free financially. And now at 35 years, if I got over a half a million, now if I, if I got this or more in my investments and I have no debt, why do I need to continue to pay on life insurance? Right. I'm retired now. I don't need life insurance. I could use it for a peace of mind. I can always renew my policy. I mean, get re reinstate a policy. So you, you know think, what I'm saying? So but, you think if more ball players knew this information when they were in college, you think that they'll set their lives up? Of course, we know that. Absolutely. I, mm -hmm. A lot of people. I think we need to we need to talk about the rule of seventy two. The rule of 72, that compounded interest. How does that money, how does your money work for you? So in college, even if, I'm telling you, if you just put away $400 a month, $400, $400 a month, I, I wouldn't even say $200 a month. How, mu well, how much money were you bringing in at Wazoo when you was there? Uh, not much, it was stipend? cheaper up there. When, when uh, a month, it was probably like a little over 500 some dollars. I was mm -hmm. getting, we had to pay our own rent. Yeah, I was, same. I was getting 1200 but when we had training table, they took 300 out of our checks every month for training table, so it dropped us to 900 But I just think about, okay, I had four roommates. With those four roommates, we were all paying like 300 bucks for rent to pay yeah, the rent on the two, house. 250 Then you think like, okay, you need about $250 for food and entertainment a month. And uh, I just, I look back at it, and I, and I was getting a Pell Grant. You know what I mean? I got a grant. Yeah. You know, or what's it called, FAFSA? FAFSA and all that stuff, yeah. Man, I mean, we were blowing money. Yeah. And we're not being smart with that money. And I, to what you're saying, if you could put, if we would have, if I would have put that whole, I remember at Oregon State, I got $3,000 um, for FAFSA. Mm -hmm. And I sent my dad $1,500 and I kept the rest and blew it. And I just said, dang, like I look back at now with this information here and I'm like, Man, if I'd have put that money away, that would have been the start of something great. That would have been the start of something great. Because the compound industry, we don't know that. You know what I'm saying? And it's amazing. I'm telling you, what, $200 a month. Listen, $200 a month, some people could say that sounds like a lot. But that's, that's $50 a week. Right. $50 a week. If you just put away $50 a week, and a lot of times people go on the weekends is blowing that $50 every weekend. You're blowing that $50 every weekend, pretty much. Right. And if you was able to put away two hundred dollars a month, especially at the age of twenty five, bro, you at the age of twenty five for thirty five years. If you put away at oh average a nine percent interest rate, you're going to have damn near a million dollars. Damn near a million dollars. Thirty five years from now, from the age of twenty five and just the one year of waiting, if you turn twenty six, the one year of waiting, you missed out on like almost uh, two hundred grand Dang. on what that could have been. Right. So it's, it's, it's that, you know, how they always say time is money. Time is money. Yeah. Time is money. You know, it's interesting because I, I tell kids about Willis McGahee's situation. We were all in college or finishing high school, going to college as freshmen when he got hurt. And what he did was he took a life insurance policy out on his leg, on his body, basically, because mm -hmm. he was, you know, he was supposed to go to the NFL that that be in the draft the next year. First round draft pick. I remember that guy getting hurt. I seen the injury. It was, it was, he broke the big bone, the femur, mm -hmm. and he didn't need an agent to bring him back. He had his own money because he took that damn life insurance mm -hmm. policy out on his body. Yep. So his mom, his family inherited almost, I think it was like 1.2 million. So yeah. he didn't need an agent to do anything because he got hurt. Now, I don't know how to go about getting those, but that is definitely something that I think our young athletes yeah. should look into getting. You know yeah. what I mean? No, you're absolutely right. I mean, and there, there are so many sources out there to be able to reach out to. I don't know anybody personally, but you could definitely do that. There's a couple guys who took out insurance policies, a linebacker that I played with. I think he only did like, I don't know, I think it was like maybe 500000 He was a linebacker, well, bars, messed up his knee, and he took like 500000 and he lives on a farm, a farm kid, whatever. And, and was still good, you know what I'm saying? But, so that is very smart. And think about it, that money that you, like you said, the money that we're getting from our stipend, you can pay towards your life insurance, I mean, that uh, your, your, your body insurance, right? Versus the injury. So that could, that, that's definitely a thing, because think about the small percentage. Well, think about, I wouldn't even say small percentage. Think about the, it's a small percentage that goes to the next level from college, right? But think about the, the, the large 
percentage of athletes that get hurt and don't get the opportunity to go net That's to the next level and, and don't have that money. Right. Or, you know, when you're in the league and you get hurt your first or second year, you're going to be sitting around trying to get back healthy mm -hmm. and you could be blowing your 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 money that you have in the bank already. Or if you take that life insurance policy out on your body, yeah. you have money to blow towards training and, and get you to get yeah. yourself back in. Yeah, it's like know? an injury insurance. Right. You know, it's an injury insurance. And uh, it's but it's it's. it's Tricky too because it has to be labeled like it could be a, it has to be like a career ending in, in, uh, injury. injury. Okay, yeah. okay. I didn't um, know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, but like something like what he did, he was able to work himself back. But like you snap your leg, that took it. That you're pretty much saying that could have ended my career. I had no shot. He didn't get drafted, no nothing. So that that definitely works in your favor. But they have that, and there's so many. And, that, and what I love about today's generation now, the younger kids are more savvy with investing. You know, athletes are start their businesses and stuff like that investing you know like now you got the crypto and well, i think and, it's more and, and like it's what, they're seeing the, what they're seeing on the internet and the it's, internet yeah i mean it's the a internet, lot of content is, out there yeah. we didn't have that no nah, we did <laughs> it's a lot of content out there now you know and 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 like a lot of people don't understand it like that investing is cool and the biggest thing is that financial freedom you don't want to be tied to a job or now i'm not knocking any job anybody working or nothing like that but you don't want to be tied in a situation where you have no freedom I am, because I'm going to tell you, I got a father that is working, you know, double and triple overtime. And, I, you know, he's in his 60s. And I'm just like, dang, dad, it's, man, I, I, don't, I won't be living like that. Yeah. I'm not going to live like, my kids are not going to live like that. And that's, that's your motivation right there in itself to be like, I got to put this amount away. Right. Because when it's time for retirement, I don't. I'm uh, not knocking nobody, but I don't want to have to be retired and then now I'm still working. Right. You know, greeting at Walmart or something like that because, and then my social, um, so what is that? Um, social Security ain't paying up. We ain't getting no Social Security, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We ain't getting no so, Social so Security. So you definitely got to put that stuff away, man. If you, and a lot of people don't understand, too. Like, if you worked, in that, or worked at a job that offered a 401k and you no longer at that job and you don't know what that, what's, where that money is at, man, you can go back to that organization, right? Get your money and roll it into a Roth IRA. Get it rolled over. You know, like a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of there's a lot of 401k money out there just floating around, I and people to, have no idea about or how to go about and getting. It. I tried to get my dad to you know transfer his 401k into something else that would have helped him in the long run, and it's hard. There's some very very old school minded and and I would say uh, illiterate that don't they don't know what to do, and they don't want no one touching that that jewel of money. No. So I left it alone, but. I get it now. Yeah, I, 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 I've received the information to know that what we have to do, yeah. but it's hard getting your father or your grandfather to roll that money over, and, yeah. um, or even friends or family. I know guys that are cops, and I tell them about this stuff. And I don't, you know, I don't sell life insurance, but I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to help you, bro. Yeah. But if you don't want to listen, then it's listen. on you. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just put away, put away a little something a month for a rainy day you know you have you can have your emergency funds if you want to put a little bit in your emergency fund of of just throwing something in the bank that you want to have easy that's easily accessible you know in the savings so be it you know throw a little bit in there but for the long run the compounding interest you want your money to work for you put it in the mutual fund and i'm telling you just 50 bucks even if you did 50 bucks a month you know what I'm saying? That 50 bucks is going to turn into something special for you. You know what I'm saying? Because then the more money you free up and you see that, you're going to like, I'm, I'm putting more in there. 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 And and again, what a lot of people think when you're investing money like that, you feel like you don't have that money. But you got to understand you paying yourself first. Right. You're paying yourself. You are literally paying yourself. Right. And, and then that's what it's about, man. We, we really got to come to that, uh, that mindset of paying ourselves first. How, how, would you, how do you accumulate wealth for your family and live within our means? Everybody want to live up, live it up, you know, feel like they just, they got it all. But at the end of the day, like you say, you can't take it with you. And once that, once that, once that glorified and toys and accessories and that, that, that clothes and everything, once that's stripped from you, like you said, who are you after that? Right. Who are you after that? 
And so the biggest thing is, man, well, I guess I guess feel like what we could take from this, man, there's so many sources out there, so much content out there. You know, it don't do you no good just to listen. It's going to do you justice if you actually be active and practice it. Right. And go out and do it. Right. And, and change your circle of people. Yeah. I think that that's huge. You know, I, I never forget a fire a fireman. Uh, we were in Oregon on, you know, visiting the University of Oregon and he set me down and he said, that, you know, you remind me of myself at this age. And, you know, he showed me what he had set up for his family. He's like, do you have your number yet? And I didn't understand what he meant by that. He's like, do you have a number that you want to pay yourself every month when you retire? That is all foreign to that's me. Called, that's called. That's called, called fame. Finn. That's called Finn, man. Well, I didn't know that. And you know so, what? Financial independent number. So when he said Finn. that to me, uh, I felt I felt stupid. I ain't gonna even lie to y'all, man. I felt like I was behind. I felt like I was, you know, I, man. No one ever talked to me like that. But he wasn't trying to belittle me. He just seen my passion and my aggressiveness to run my business, and he was telling me, "You need to figure out what your number is." And I'll help yep. you. So let's fast forward. It's been it's been three years since we had that conversation. I have two Roth IRAs. Okay, I have. He talked about a disaster fund, mm -hmm. making sure that you, if something happened, that emergency I, would be, fund. I would be able to take care of, right of things right away. So I was able to put a large amount of money away for that, and I started feeling better because you know, like you said earlier in the podcast, as a man, you feel like you fail, mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes I walk around and I know, you know, people may look at me and say, dang, like, he's all, he's quiet today, something's wrong with him. I have a lot on my mind about what I need to do, and sometimes we don't always have the angle on how to get to it. Mm -hmm. So, which is why I try to surround myself with people in the financial industry as much as possible, man, and to help me through this process, man, yeah. because... Man, you 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 don't want to you don't want to live know. and die, and then you can't give your family nothing to put them in a financial it's, it's, it's burden a, a situation. That's why I joined the financial industry, and that's why I actively into it because the biggest thing with me is I wanted to learn more about it. How does money work, right? And not feel like I have to work so hard for my money, and then once it's gone, what do I have to show for it? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, that was my biggest thing. It's like, no, nah, I want to learn. Now I could put a plan together for myself. And based off my experiences, based off my knowledge, now I could teach people. Man, uh, again, it's always good to be on with y'all, man, and just be able to just discuss, you know, different things and being able to reach reach everybody out there um, who's tuning in, who's listening, man. There's just so much more to bring to the table, so much knowledge, and we, we have so much experience that we want to get out there. Man, when it comes to our finances, ladies and gentlemen, we, we gotta we gotta come up with a plan. And, and that's the biggest thing. It's like we, we all have a GPS on our phone and it's gonna tell us how to get there. But we gotta create our financial GPS, man. And put your numbers, you know, have your number in mind, know what you wanna do, know where you wanna go. And I'm telling you, you're gonna reach some goals, man. Thanks again. This is us on Beyond the Breaks.